welcome back guys now in this video let's discuss about the saliva and salivary glands now what is the amount of salivary secretions happens every day usually 1.5 liters of saliva is getting produced every day okay so the salivary secretions are 1.5 liters per day and these salivary secretions they are hypotonic in nature what does i mean by hypotonic in nature when compared to the blood plasma okay this saliva is having hypotonic nature okay the osmolarity of saliva is less when compared to blood plasma okay that's what i mean by now having said that let's go one by one saliva is produced from salivary glands salivary glands okay we all know there are three important salivary glands see please concentrate here there is a parotid gland which is present in the cheeks parotid gland is there along with its duct there is a gland which is present down to your tongue below your tongue that's a sublingual salivary gland and there is a gland which is present below your mandible that is called as submandibular salivary glands out of all these three who is major the major salivary gland which means 70% of the saliva is getting secreted from submandibular okay submandi bular submandibular salivary gland is a major salivary gland and the minor salivary glands see apart, apart from these three there are many other salivary glands also very very small in number and small in size they are called as ebner's gland okay ebner's gland okay ebner's glands are the minor salivary glands having said that let's see there was a, this new salivary gland which was discovered a year back okay this can be a question in your future exams so newly discovered salivary glands are called as tuberial glands tuberial glands so tuberial glands are newly discovered salivary glands now let's take a condition where a person is producing antibodies and these antibodies what they are doing they are coming and destroying the salivary glands okay i'm just giving a condition where the antibodies are coming and destroying the salivary glands as well as these antibodies are also going to the lacrimal glands and the lacrimal glands are also getting destroyed now what happens if both the salivary glands and lacrimal glands if both are under attack they are getting destroyed what will happen there is dry mouth and dry eyes what is this condition called as see there is a condition where there is autoimmune destruction of salivary glands as well as lacrimal glands also this condition is called as zogren syndrome zogren syndrome okay now if someone ask you what what are the clinical features in zogren syndrome in zogren syndrome the patient will be having dry eyes as well as dry mouth it's a autoimmune disease which commonly seen in the females now in saliva are there any enzymes for carbohydrate digestion any enzymes for lipid digestion and any enzymes for protein digestion are they present or not we will discuss one by one in saliva yes there are enzymes for carbohydrate digestion the name of the enzyme is called as salivary amylase okay so salivary enzyme salivary amylase are thialin salivary amylase or thialin is an enzyme which is present in the saliva which helps in digestion of carbohydrates now is there is any enzyme which is present in the saliva which can digest the lipids yes there are enzymes the name of the enzyme is lingual lipase now from where this lingual lipase is coming lingual lipase is coming from the minor salivary gland what is the name of that minor salivary gland ebner's gland okay so don't forget ebner's gland is the one ebner's gland is the one which produces the lingual lipase helps in digestion of the lipids last one is there is any enzyme in the saliva which is helping in digestion of proteins no there is no enzyme for protein digestion saliva does not have any enzyme for digesting the proteins take a note no enzyme for 
प्रोटीन डाइजेशन ओके नो एंजाइम फॉर प्रोटीन डाइजेशन इन सलाइवा ओके नाउ See whatever the salivary amylase is getting produced in the mouth. Now this salivary amylase is helping in the digestion of little amount of carbohydrates. Now whenever the saliva, the salivary amylase, when it goes down to the stomach, in the stomach, the salivary amylase is inactivated with the acid. The acid whatever is present in the stomach, it inactivates the salivary amylase. This was the important question which was previously asked. That's why I am discussing. So salivary amylase, it is denaturated by acid. in stomach okay saliva it contains what we have already seen saliva contains different different enzymes for the digestion of carbohydrates as well as lipids apart from that does it have any uh, substances which are antibacterial in nature yes it do have what are they saliva contains iga antibody now this iga antibody is called as secretory antibody secretory antibody why we are calling it as a secretory antibody why because this iga antibody is present in all the body secretions in gi secretions urinary secretions respiratory secretions in all the secretions iga antibody is there which is antibacterial in nature okay if there is any bacteria this iga antibody will go and attack them apart from that it also have substances like lactoferrins lactoferrin and lysozyme okay lactoferrin and lysozyme they are also antibacterial in nature so these are the substances which are present in the saliva which helps in uh, which helps in like you know protecting the body from bacteria which uh, uh, which is entering into the body now let's discuss about the innervation of the salivary glands remember your glands for them to secrete they need to have the nerve innervation See, it's very simple. For your muscle to contract, definitely it need a nerve innervation. The alpha lower motor neuron should have to come and help in the contraction of the muscle. In the same way, your glands also need a nerve innervation for them to produce the secretions. Now, let's discuss about the parotid gland and submandibular gland. Submandibular gland is a major salivary gland. Now, these glands are producing the saliva, no doubt. Now, nerve innervation is coming from which nerves? Cranial nerves or spinal nerves? Cranial nerves. which cranial nerves see think like this the activity of this salivary glands the secretions are under the control of which nervous system parasympathetic nervous system mainly parasympathetic nervous system is helping in the production of secretions in the git now which parasympathetic neurons are coming to the salivary glands and helping in the production of saliva see the answer is ninth cranial nerve and seventh cranial nerve the ninth cranial nerve whatever is coming out it is going through otic ganglia okay so ninth cranial nerve which is glossopharyngeal nerve writing here glossopharyngeal nerve it comes out of the it, it comes out out of the the brain stem it is going to the otic ganglion and it's the first order neurons are getting terminated and the post ganglionic fibers where they are going the post ganglionic fibers are going to parotid gland and now the parotid gland will start to produce the saliva so ninth cranial nerve is the innervation and seventh cranial nerve is coming out of the brain stem it's innervating which ganglion very simple sub mandibular ganglion now from the sub mandibular ganglion post ganglionic neurons are coming and they are innervating the sub mandibular salivary gland now sub mandibular salivary gland is going to produce the saliva how to remember see ninth cranial nerve ninth cranial nerve see if you reverse the number 9 it will become p so 9 is something looking like p right so ninth cranial nerve is the one which is giving the nerve innervation to the parasympathetic fibers to the parotid gland and 7 See seven for submandibular glands. Yes, yes. So seventh cranial nerve is innervating the submandibular gland, and now submandibular gland is producing the secretions. So this is the nerve supply of salivary glands. A few more important points about the saliva. See in your body the maximum potassium secretion, the maximum secretion of potassium is happening into which body fluids? Happens into saliva. You are. 
MCQ in FMG as well as, as well as the PG exams. The maximum potassium secretion happens in saliva. But if they little bit change the terminology, something like which body secretions is having maximum concentration of potassium. Potassium is highly concentrated in which body secretions? Concentration for colonic secretions. Okay, so colonic secretions are having maximum concentration of potassium. Maximum secretion of potassium is happening into which, uh, which secretions? It is salivary secretions. Okay guys, we have discussed all the important points regarding the saliva and salivary glands. Now, in the next video, let's discuss about the gastric secretions and how digestion happens in the stomach. Thank you.